Good day, everybody. This is Chris of the Ancient Scholar, and today what I'm going to be talking about is I'm going to be talking about the uh, placard system in the United States, and this is actually a system of looking at vehicles that uh, transport materials that are uh, potentially hazardous or are, are in fact uh, known hazardous materials and this is the NFPA placard systems very common uh, you probably have noticed these on uh, semis uh, tractor trailers uh, driving around um, that they'd have these different placards and we're gonna try to talk about these today and identify what what the different placards mean what the numbers and what some of the symbols mean so this is the the NF PA placard system. This is a specific to the United States. I don't know if other countries use this or not. Um, I'm sure other countries have something that's very similar. So you have these these four different placards that you can you can have, um, and we'll talk about what the different colors mean. And then um, generally there will be a um, number associated with that color, or in some cases there may be a special symbol, and we'll talk about what all of those mean. So. Let's go ahead and just start at the top here in this red. And um, what I'll do is I'll just draw a red line over here. And we'll talk about what that is. And red, if you see a red placard, that means that we're talking about a flammability hazard. Okay, this is something that's flammable. So I'll write that there. a flammability hazard all right and then there are um, up to five different um, numbers associated with that you may have a four three two one or zero all right and let's just talk about what these mean so if you see something you see this placard here um, what do the different numbers mean? Well, first of all, the red means that it is a flammability hazard. And um, four means that that particular substance is going to vaporize. It's going to vaporize very quickly and easily or readily burn. And this will occur at normal put that in quotes at normal under um, normal temperatures normal pressures so under normal environmental conditions what you would what you would expect it just uh, in day-to-day -day life a three if you see a three the three indicates that this can be ignited okay so you can ignite it under almost any condition Okay, so very cold, very hot, very humid, very dry, um, what, whatever the case may be, that substance will ignite under um, a, a wide variety or wide range of different conditions. Um, two, if you see a two, that means that the, the substance must be heated. All right, it must be heated or exposed, perhaps would be a better word. All right, it must be exposed to high temperatures all right so you must you need to expose whatever that substance is to a fairly high temperature um, before it uh, will actually burn um, a number one means that it needs to be preheated all right so you need to get it heated up and then once it's preheated it can ignite and then zero indicates that it just it won't burn there's uh, no no significant burn um, capability or hazard, we'll say. All right, it's just not going to burn. Okay, so that is the red or your flammability hazard. Um, let's move on to the yellow one here. All right, so yellow is uh, let's see we'll we'll bring yellow down over here yellow is what's known as an instability hazard it's unstable it's unstable or it has the ability to explode um, so I'll put instability 
instability slash explosion. All right. Instability slash explosion hazard. And I'm going to change the color to black just, just so um, it's a little easier to see. And again, there are five different um, numbers associated with this. Four, three, two, one, zero. All right. And four, just like the flammability, is it's going to explode. It will explode under normal, under normal conditions. Okay, and then three is um, it will need to explode under high temps, high temperatures, or some sort of shock. Okay, so you have to hit it or smack it or. Um, uh, expose it to high temperatures before it'll explode. And then two has to do with um, uh, the chemistry, although explosions are obviously chemistry as well, but basically this has to do with a very uh, significant, a very significant chemical, a significant chemical change is, is going to occur uh, under high high temps or high pressures. All right, so maybe under normal normal conditions, the, the substance is not, uh, it does not have a, an explosion hazard, but then once you expose it to real high temperatures or high um, pressures, there's some significant chemical change of that molecule, and it changes into another uh, type of molecule, another form of molecule, um, that has significantly different chemical properties um, under those conditions. And then number one is uh, generally stable, we can say. It's generally stable um, unless you have really high temperature. All right, so high temps will make this less stable. And then zero is totally stable. This is a very stable substance that we're talking about. All right. Um, let's move on over to the blue area here. And then I'm going to move up here. And I'll do the same thing. All right. And then blue has to do with a health hazard. A health hazard. All right. And just like the other th two other ones, um, you know what? I could do that in blue since that's pretty easy to see. We've got four, three, two, one, zero. All right. And health hazard four is it's lethal. All right. Its effects can be lethal. Um, three is uh, serious. Obviously, there's some crossover here. Um, serious um, injury as well. Um, two has to do with uh, causing a permanent, um, some kind of uh, incapacitation. Or perhaps some sort of lingering, lingering or chronic, um, or uh, we'll say residual, some sort of residual injury that can occur as a result of that. Um, one is more to do with irritation. Okay, so it's significant irritation. Um, so maybe something like uh, CS uh, tear gas, um, so something like that, where it's significantly irritating, but not not inherently lethal or um, harmful or long-term effects. And then zero, just like all the other ones, um, that there is no there's no significant or no substantial um, health hazard there. All right. 
And then finally, we'll move down to the white area here, and I'll just uh, we'll just do that all in black. And uh, I'm gonna do that right here. All right. And this is a special hazard. If there's some sort of special thing that we need to be aware of, so this is a special hazard. And special hazards, um, there are there are not numbers associated with this, but rather there are symbols. So let me just go ahead and put some of the symbols that you may see on something with a special hazard. Um, the first symbol is kind of a um, looks like like three little cones and then a large dot in the middle of these three cones. All right, and I, I'm sure you guys have, uh, most of you have probably seen this, this particular symbol. These are usually filled in like that, and it's, so it's like some sort of little, little central nucleus, and it's, it like, looks like radiating these three things, and that symbol, of course, is uh, indicating that that particular substance is radioactive. All right, um, so there you go, radioactive. Um, the next symbol that you might see is a W, okay? And then the W will typically have a line through it. And what that means is that that particular substance violently reacts, violently reacts um, with water, H2O, all right? Um, some other symbols that we'll see, um, ALK, ALK indicates that that substance is highly alkaline, it's highly basic. Alright, it's highly alkaline. Um, you may see ACID, um, hopefully you know what that means, it's acidic. Um, COR is corrosive. All right, is corrosive. Um, you also may see OX, which means that that is an oxidizing agent. Okay, and then the last uh, more common symbols, you may see a W with a line through it followed by an OX. And as you might guess, um, this is um, oxidizing and highly reactive with water. And you may even have an explosion occur. Okay, so it's, it's highly reactive um, and oxidizing agent with water. All right, guys, these are the, the main or the significant components of the um, NFPA um, placard. Uh, system that uh, you see on uh, many of the commercial vehicles that may transport uh, hazardous or potentially hazardous materials, and this is the first. Uh, if you're if you're in dealing with the scene, and obviously you're staging, and you're you're in a safe area, you're well away from the incident, and maybe you're you have binoculars or spotting scope, and you're looking at the scene, you can look at this. Um, on the, whatever vehicle, and at least it will give you the the basic or a rudimentary idea of, of what general kind of hazards are we dealing with. Obviously, it's not all inclusive, but it is a step in the right direction. And um, I think I'll talk about some other things. Um, there's a really good book um, that actually all emergency vehicles need to have on them. Uh, I believe it's a federal requirement. And I might even talk a little bit about that book because that book actually allows you to um, really zero in on specific agents and then um, it, it, it gives you information about a specific responses and how, how far you need to be away and uh, staging and basic first aid and, and uh, some more uh, in detailed information. But I think I'll go ahead and just cut the video off here. I think this is uh, certainly enough to digest for now. Okay, guys, uh, hopefully you found that uh, interesting, and as always, thanks for hanging in there.